Certain groups of Pokemon get new additions every generation. We all know about the regional birds like Pidgeot and Corviknight or the regional rodents like Beedoof and Lechonk. Wait, pigs aren't rodents? And neither are raccoons. Or sheep? Why do we keep calling them regional rodents instead of regional mammals? If we called them regional mammals, we could include Poochiena. But that's not the point of this video. There is a lesser known group known as the regional turtles. Every generation, the Pokemon company releases a new turtle Pokemon to be the regional turtle representative for that set of games. It may be kind of hard to think of each one if you've never really caught the pattern, but don't worry as we will be going through each one from the very obvious turtle Pokemon of generation one to the legendary turtle Pokemon of generation nine. And if you saw the thumbnail, you may be thinking, Avalug isn't a turtle Pokemon. Well, I actually have a pretty strong argument that says that Avalug is in fact a turtle, but we'll get to that later in the video. Also, this is the second video in my new series where we discuss the changes, trends, and lore in Pokemon from Generation 1 to the modern day Pokemon games. So make sure to subscribe if you like seeing these videos. We're also getting so close to 3000 subscribers and it would be awesome to hit that milestone. I promise we have lots of interesting videos coming up. There is no better place to start this video than with a starter Pokemon, the line that kicked off the trend of regional turtles, the Squirtle line. Being fully transparent, the Squirtle line is one of my favorite starter lines, favorite Pokemon lines of all time. This tiny turtle line followed the same concept trend as the other two Kanto starters being based on cool, yet common household pets. However, Squirtle isn't just based on some common household turtle, it's also based on the Japanese folklore legend of the Minogame, a turtle that lived for 10,000 years and grew a tail made of seaweed. This design inspiration is clearly put on display when Squirtle evolves into Wartortle. I mean, look at that tail. Spoiler alert, this isn't the only time the Minogame comes up in this video, so try and remember it for later so you can look like a Japanese folklore scholar. The final evolution for this line does break the Minogame trend, but for good reason. Prior to Blastoise existing, there was a beta Pokemon known as Carabaggio. Carabaggio, Carabaggio, Carabaggio. Carabaggio obviously strongly resembles Blastoise, as you can tell by these images. However, it is missing those signature cannons that make Blastoise so cool. A likely explanation was that as they finalized the game, they realized that two unrelated water turtle lines was a little bit of overkill. So they made Carabaggio fit more into the Squirtle line and gave it cannons, given the natural and easy connection between tank armor and turtle shells. Despite Obviously, being a turtle, Blastoise is known as the Shellfish Pokemon, which is the same species name as the Kabutops line. However, odd species names are not the point of this video. If you would like me to do a video on all the weird species names out there, like how Slowbro is the Hermit Crab Pokemon, I'd be more than willing to do so. Just let me know down in the comments below. And I can't finish out the Squirtle line without talking about Mega Blastoise and Gigantamax Blastoise. I mean, more cannons and more, more cannons. Can't get any cooler than that. I mean, Gigantamax Blastoise is so cool. The turtle Pokemon introduced in Generation 2 is one of the most controversial entries on this regional turtle list. One of the most well-known gimmick Pokemon, Shuckle. Shuckle is one of the most iconic Pokemon for its absolutely wonky stats. It either has extremely high or extremely low stats in every single statistic. Just going off the numbers alone, it is either the best or the bottom four worst in every single stat. But we're not here to talk stats, we're here to talk turtles. While Shuckle has a ton of design inspirations like fermentation jars, which gives it that berry juice gimmick, or slime molds, which gives it that yellow wormy body, one big inspiration for it is a small insect known as barnacle scales. The barnacle scale is the bane of many farmers' existence. It loves to latch onto plants and cause massive infestations, which is a move that Shuckle can learn, by the way. The barnacle scale insect is a part of the Cosidae family, which is also known as tortoise scales, which is probably a huge reason why Shuckle looks so much like a turtle. You're gonna tell me that doesn't look like a turtle? And if you're still on the fence for whether Shuckle is a turtle, don't worry, I have another defense that is coming later in the video when we get to a different Pokemon at a future generation. Hoenn's turtle is unequivocally, undeniably, and without a doubt, a turtle.
Uh, well, it's actually a tortoise, but for the sake of this video, turtles, tortoises, we're going to say it's the same thing. Regional turtle just has that je ne sais quoi to it. Anywho, as soon as I said Hoenn and turtle in the same sentence, I am sure Flannery came to mind. Hoenn's turtle is in fact Torkoal. If you have played VGC at all since Generation 7, there is a chance you have battled a Sunroom team, which is a team built entirely on the back, on the shell of Torkoal. Torkoal can actually summon the sun with its ability Drought, and when coupled with Trick Room, which makes slow Pokemon faster, Torkoal becomes an absolute menace. And in Generation 9, a super fast flying type Torkoal that can hit you with overheat while the sun is up is not something that you want to take. Regardless, there isn't much of a point to be made about how turtly Torkoal is. Am I not turtly enough for the turtle club? It is quite literally a coal furnace tortoise. It does not become more turtle than that. I do want to say Ashes was super cute in the anime and it took on both Registeel and Darkrai. What a beast. In Generation 4, we go back to basics. No longer will Turtle Pokemon be Dex fillers. They were made to be starters. <clears throat> I am, of course, talking about the best grass starter Pokemon, Turtwig. And Trico is a close option, and Bulbasaur is one of the best Pokemon ever made. I completely agree, but just look at this little guy. Keeping in line with Torkoal, the turtle inspirations for the Turtwig line are pretty clear cut. Someone went outside, saw a turtle in some grass, and went, Whoa, a grass turtle. And voila, Turtwig was born. But whoever did it absolutely nailed the design. He is so cute. Unless you forget to water him and then his leaves start to wilt and he starts to die. But just make sure you're watering your Turtwigs. When Turtwig evolves into Grottle, it continues to take inspiration from basic real turtles like Snapping Turtles and Box Turtles, but its twig also becomes a bush and it begins to take inspiration from dinosaurs. The main dinosaurs that inspired Grottle are the Ankylosaurus and the Stegosaurus. When looking at these two dinosaurs, it's easy to see how these two inspired Grottle. Seriously though, try and tell me that Grottle does not look like Spike from Land Before Time. As Grottle evolves into Torterra, the plant continues to grow from a shrubbery, shout out to my Monty Python fans, into a tree. But it doesn't end at a tree, it grows mountains and a pathway almost and begins to almost look like an island on this turtle shell. That would be a great segue for Torterra's inspirations. It would, wouldn't it? Torterra is obviously based on all the things that Grottle and Turtwig are based on, but it begins to take inspiration from the World Turtle, which is found in many world mythologies and pop culture. The World Turtle is exactly what it sounds like. To put it in the simplest of terms, it is a giant turtle that carries the world on its back. I don't really have time to deep dive into the mythologies of the World Turtle, but it is found in many cultures around the world like Chinese, Hindu, and Native American mythos. Yet again, Ash had one of these bad boys in the anime, and it lost every battle it was in after it evolved. But it was still cool that him and Paul both had one in the anime. Gotta love the turtle representation. We've had gimmick turtles and starter turtles and dex filler turtles, but what if we had a turtle Pokemon belonging to an entirely new category? What if we had a fossil turtle Pokemon? Well, Unova answered just that when they gave us the Tortuga line. Despite it being based on a fossil Pokemon, the first form of this line is actually based on a living creature, not an extinct one. But not just any living creature, it's based on the Leatherback Sea Turtle, the oldest sea turtle species. This animal has been on the Earth for 150 million years. That's almost as long as it's been since Dugong got a buff. I mean, 475 stat total? 70 special attack what am i supposed to do with that but that's not the point leatherback sea turtles have been on the earth since dinosaurs roamed the earth that's how tortuga can be based on both a living creature and qualify as a fossil pokemon as it evolves into caracosta it starts to gain some design inspirations from the archelon the largest turtle species ever recorded with a 15 foot wingspan Caracosta also takes design inspirations from protective gear like face masks and bulletproof vests, which really accentuates the idea of a protective turtle shell. 
This is also further demonstrated with its very respectable 133 defense stat. It could also eat other fossil Pokemon according to the Alola decks. Doesn't say that it does, just says it could. Stay safe out there, trainers. Let's continue that trend of obvious turtle Pokemon with the Kalos representative, Avalug. Now, we don't need to talk much about this guy because it's so obvious that he's a turtle, kind of like Torkoal. So, let's go to Gen 7. What? You need proof that he's a turtle? Fine. First off, let's look at its general shape. It matches our idea of a general turtle body shape, even with a shell. Of course, Avalug's shell is upside down with the carapace on the bottom and the plastron on the top. It even has lines that match the plastron of many common turtle species. This inverted shell was of course artistically chosen to represent the quintessential iceberg with the majority of the mass being on the bottom, hidden below the sea level. Now for my piece de resistance, the ultimate proof that Avalug is a turtle Pokemon, the Pokemon company says it is. Earlier this year, the Pokemon Company hosted a Shellabration, which is a celebration of turtle Pokemon, featuring anime episodes, TCG cards, and tweets about turtle Pokemon. Let's take a look at those tweets. The first one shows several Pokemon inside a Pokemon camp from Sword and Shield. We see lots of iconic turtle Pokemon like Blastoise, Torkoal, and... Wait a minute... Avalug! right there in the celebration tweet celebrating iconic turtle Pokemon like Avalug. But if you need another tweet, I'm of course happy to oblige. Also during the celebration, the Pokemon company made another tweet featuring a team of Pokemon that had just defeated the Galar Pokemon League, yet again featuring turtle Pokemon with Avalug proudly presented amongst the other turtles. And remember earlier in the video when I said I would have another point to make about Shuckle being a turtle Pokemon? Well, look who also appears in these tweets with Avalug and his other fellow turtle members, a strong and proud Shuckle. These tweets definitely confirm something that we knew deep down in our hearts. Avalug and Shuckle are turtle Pokemon. Also, thank you to Koopa TV for making an article about Avalug being a turtle Pokemon. I'll put a link in the description. As we move to Alola, we are back to Pokemon that are, without a doubt, turtles. This Pokemon even has turtle in its species name. I am, of course, talking about the second fire turtle on this list, Turtonator. This fire dragon Pokemon is one of my favorite Pokemon to come out of Alola, and is actually one of my favorite dragon Pokemon, period, which is my favorite Pokemon type. Turtonator is not just based on average boring turtles, it's based on one of the most fascinating turtle species in the entire world, the Mata Mata. This inspiration is very clear by its shell spikes, its neck frills, and its very unique head shape. Turtonator is also, of course, based on exploding mines. Its dex entries often talk about its explosive shell that will blow up if anyone makes the slightest contact with it. We can see this very clearly in its unique signature move shell trap, where it preps its shell for one turn, and in the next turn, if the opponent makes contact with it, it will explode for 150 base power. Turtonator is also likely based on the legendary Chinese creature, the Turtle Dragon, with the body of a turtle and the head of a dragon. It's also likely based on the French mythological creature, the Tarrasque, which makes it very easy to see why Turtonator is the only turtle Pokemon with the dragon typing. So far. Galar went back to the traditional water turtle route when it introduced Choodle and Dreadnought. While pretty simple in design, these Pokemon actually piqued a lot of people's interest when they were introduced in the trailers leading up to Sword and Shield. It is very easy to see that the turtle that inspired this line is the Snapping Turtle. Biting is kind of their whole motif, and no turtle is better at snapping than a Snapping Turtle. These Pokemon even have the ability Strong Jaw to really hit home just how hard they can bite, and their species name is the Snapping and Bite Pokemon, respectively. Choodle also likely takes inspiration from the Big Headed Turtle, which, much like Choodle, is a turtle with a big head. Dreadnought likely takes a lot of its design inspiration from the Alligator Snapping Turtle, which has much rougher skin and a much more spiked carapace. However, this line was inspired by more than just turtles. Dreadnought's name is actually a dead giveaway to the other half of their inspiration being a Dreadnought, which is a very iconic ironclad warship. 
This design inspiration is much more evident in Gigantamax Dreadnought, with the warship motif, the overlapping armor plating, the bow-like jaw, which is very reminiscent of a Dreadnought's design. We have covered starter turtles, gimmick turtles, dex filler turtles, fossil turtles, and even regional variant turtles, but now it is time to go to the very top and talk about the first legendary turtle Pokemon. We have yet to see this amazing Pokemon in action, but soon when the Indigo Disc DLC drops, we will have our Generation 9 Regional Turtle, the legendary Terrapagos. Not much is really known about this Pokemon, but there is one thing that is for certain. This is our Regional Turtle. Terrapagos is an extremely important Pokemon. Its entire existence is a massive plot point in Generation 9, and it's the source of probably the biggest mystery from the Scarlet and Violet book. While many fans did speculate that Terrapagos is the disc Pokemon spoken about in Heath's notes, his descendant Briar actually confirms this fact in the Teal Mask DLC. While it's all speculation at this point, it is very possible that Terrapagos is the reason that terrestrialization and even all the Paradox Pokemon even exist, truly showing the power of this legendary Pokemon. Terrapagos, much like Ogrepan, comes in two distinct forms, its base form and the form it takes when it terrestrializes which is likely the form that Heath saw down in the crater, the form that gives us Terra Shards, and the source of that elusive 19th type that we've seen in the trailers. Terrapagos is definitely an amalgamation of all the different myths and legends that inspired all the different turtle Pokemon on this list. The world turtle likely inspired this Pokemon that carries every type from the Pokemon world on its shell. And remember earlier when I said to keep the Minogame in your mind? Well, look at this Pokemon's terrestrialized form, a turtle that lived for 10,000 years and grew a tail of seaweed. Terrapagos is also likely based on many different real-world turtles. The Apagos portion of its name is likely inspired by the Galapagos giant tortoise, and all the unique markings on its shell are likely inspired by the shell of a diamondback terrapin. Outside of that though, not much is really known about this Gen 9 legendary turtle. I'm very excited for the coming months so I can see the massive impact this Pokemon has on Pokemon lore. And some of you may say that I should have waited to make this video until this Pokemon actually came out, but I actually couldn't because... I like turtles! And that wraps up this video on Regional Turtle Pokemon. The secret of Regional Turtles is that they've existed this entire time and are probably as important as Regional Bird Pokemon and maybe even Starter Pokemon. After seeing all the various kinds of Turtle Pokemon we got to cover in this video, I am very excited for a pseudo-legendary Turtle Pokemon. Maybe it could be like a like a rock type and it could have a spherical shell with like rocky tectonic plates all over it. And maybe it can like explode and do massive amounts of damage. And maybe it's based on a on a yokai that goes downhill and knocks out people. Is Golem a turtle? It is, right? Well, let me know down in the comments. Is Golem a turtle? Remember that this is a series where we talk about how Pokemon has changed from Generation 1 to the modern day, so make sure to subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will catch you guys next time as the adventure continues.